Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the latest edition of Swan TV. I hope you're all good. Uh, today, I'm delighted to be joined by Nancy Smith, who is the Communications and Stakeholder Engagement Executive at Water Resources East, so WRE, and she's joining us from Spain. Nancy. I know, I know. James, you shouldn't do that and make everyone feel bad. But if, if it oh. makes, if there's any consolation, it's actually too hot here, so... <laughs> and what you, you were telling me before we, we started this, what, what is it there today? Temperature wise? Uh, 30, about 36, 37. Oh, just 36, 37, and Miles. I am in beautiful Norwich in the rain. <laughs> but hey, that's not going to take away from the wonderful conversation that we're going to have. So, um, do you want to start off? Tell us a little bit about what your job involves and a little bit about what um, Water Resources East do. Yes, so um, as communications and stakeholder engagement exec, I do a lot of, uh, for example, we're a small team, right? So people just have to kind of get their hands dirty in every part of the business. So I run the, the Twitter accounts and LinkedIn profiles along with my colleagues. I um, organize a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. So making sure that our stakeholder engagement events run smoothly. I also do a lot of writing, so copy for... Mm -hmm. Uh, journals and and newspaper articles and things like that uh, as well as kind of running and maintaining the website and then a million tiny little things on top of that as well Absolutely. um but water resources east is a, a multi-sector regional water planning group so bringing it up nationally give you a national picture yep. there's five similar groups in in england formed um, at various times, but now we're all led by the ambitions of the Environment Agency's National Framework for Water Resources. Right. So WRE is a bit different in the fact that we're entirely independent and we're functioning as a, a not-for-profit com company limited by guarantee. So we actually have uh, like around 170 members at the moment, okay. which is great and it's growing every day. Um, yeah, and these are members from pretty much every water use sector or interested party you could think of. So like public water supply, environment, agriculture, energy, community groups, local governments, universities, just just everything you name it is there yeah you name it we've got it <laughs> um so we became independent in 2019 but we actually started in 2014 mm -hmm. um more as kind of like a thought leadership kind of experiment to see um what we could learn from international best practice on how integrated water resource management is applied mm. and can we can that work in england if so how would it work um, but now we're at this point, WRE's vision is for Eastern England to have sufficient water resources to support a flourishing economy, you know, insert tagline here, flourishing economy, thriving environment and the needs of, of all its, its population. Amazing. Um, and lastly, this is all going towards our first regional plan, which is coming out in 2023. Exciting times. Okay. exciting times so okay. how just talk to me a little bit more about how 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 do wre actually help businesses with their re, with water resources what talk a little bit around that and what, and what that involves yeah so this is a good question um you know what do wre actually do but um overall <laughs> i would say um we we help businesses to ensure that the their use of water resources is more sustainable and resilient um in the future, but also making sure that there's water available for them to use in the first place. Yeah. Um, so having the supply that is important, but also um, demand reduction efforts are part of that. And you can't have a sustainable supply without, you know, putting efforts into demand reduction as well. Um, so we help, we can help businesses to realize that as part of our wider ambitions. Um, we have these these flagship projects, obviously, that like every company does yeah. that we're, we're really pushing forward on. But as well as that, WRE acts as a facilitator and a platform for conversations between businesses and other members. So as an example, if you're a large landowner or a farmer, we can connect you to another member who maybe provides some water saving technology for the agricultural sector that you, you might not otherwise have known about. Like, hey, did you know about this company? No, I didn't. Well, they're members as well. So why didn't you have a conversation? Love it. Um, and for example, if you're a housing developer, we can connect you with uh, the regional water company in a way that you probably wouldn't be able, been able to before, you know, beyond the conference kind of yeah, yeah. rounds that used to happen. And the fact you just get a bill and that's it. 
yeah yeah exactly exactly we we provide like so many regular forums and means of communication that people can have between between each other as members um a large part of what we do as well is is research partnerships and collaborations with our university and educational members and this helps us to stay in the loop and involved with any, any innovations that are coming through and ways of working and thinking. And we share those outputs with all our members, again, which they otherwise, you know, probably wouldn't have really known about. Um, basically, at the end, end of the day, as I said before, we don't want a lack of water or yeah. an uncertainty over that water availability to be a barrier to economic economic development Absolutely. and aka businesses in our region in our region um but on that we want to know what businesses water needs are you know we can't plan for the future if we're not entirely sure of what the reality is going to be or you know what people want so this is like my plug for membership which which i was told to stick in there um get, you, get, out, get out of there now get out go on. you so uh, being a member is completely free um because we're a company limited by guarantee you just have to guarantee like one pound in case yep. you know it doesn't all work out um but you you start to become part of this like fantastic network and it, and anyone can become a member um and i'll in, you know in a, a little while later in the conversation i'll go into like what being a member looks like like actually in reality um but yeah if anyone's interested just get in touch contact at wra.org.uk we'll send you all the information and in little membership letter and you can send it back if you're interested love it and people what can you get for a quid these days let's be fair <laughs> Exactly. No, 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 even like a Freddo is kind of on the cusp. Of oh, things it's a you can get from hand. To go to Space Raiders. But, yes, Space but, Raiders. but a Freddo also true. You can't get a lot for a quid, people. Mm -mm. Membership to WRE, you can. So we are we are um, proud members, new members of, of WRE, which is which is awesome. You became independent as you as you noted in 2019. Um, now operate as the collab collaborative membership, uh, as you talked about. So how? You've talked a little bit about, but how key are your members to, to what you do? Um, and how do you communicate to them your planning and strategy? Right. So, I mean, let's let's not mess around there. There would be no WRE without our members, essentially. Yeah. So they are incredibly important. Um, we have about three to four membership meetings a year, as well as our um, AGM. Mm -hmm. um, all of these are interactive events where we, we kind of catch everyone up on what's been going on. We get their opinions from them. We have like a conversation and we advise on, on how people can get involved going forward if they're not already involved. You know, I mean, like in projects and in yeah. conversations, research projects, whatever. Um, and we also essentially operate an open door policy where if you're a member, you can get in contact with us anytime outside of these formal events. Um, and this is especially important this year because we are working towards creating our draft regional plan, the final of which is due in 2023. So involvement in this is, is crucial and a great test of our membership model, I would say. Um, we're going to we're going to be having so much going on from like one day intensive training events to planning sessions, road shows where we go around all the different um, areas of our region. Um, in this co-creation process, as well as like one-to-one -one individual conversations, more webinars, all these backs and forths. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be hectic. I'm kind of like looking forward to it and also slightly to terrified all, at the same time. All these little <laughs> things that you do, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> But, um, but basically, the, the essence of this process is that all our members are going to be invited to become water planners like themselves and have their voices heard in this process, um, as opposed to leaving it to the experts, which I suppose has like been the old school thinking. Um, and then people only have a short window to voice their opinion. Our thinking is, why can't everyone be an expert in this process? We all have a stake in water's future. So why not? Absolutely. Absolutely. And like I say, you know, you, you guys are very engaging. You know, we, we reached out to, a, I won't lie, we reached out to a number of different organisations. We, mm -hmm. we wanted to do something with water. We wanted to, you know, promote it, support it. And we reached out to a number of companies. And it's amazing. People just don't want help, do they? And, you know, you, you were, mm -hmm. to be fair, one of the few that actually came back and said, guys, we'd love your help. We'd love you to join. It's, it's interesting. A lot of people seem to just don't want the help for some reason. 
I don't know. I don't understand. I don't really understand that either. Even we, we need to help as well. We're never shy. If there's something we never pretend that we, if there's something we don't know, or we're lacking in experience somewhere, we're like, we don't know this, come help us. Or we need more experience here, there and there and elsewhere. Um, people need to be a little bit more transparent, I think, about mm-hmm. what kind of like where their weaknesses are, perhaps, and where there are little gaps that they need to fill. Definitely, definitely. As part of our membership, we have agreed uh, to donate ten pounds for every every water contract that we that we help secure uh, for for our clients. Can you talk to me a little bit more about how that money will be used, and if you have any particular big projects that are coming up? We've got loads of big projects coming up, but we're lucky in the fact that. Um, From a technical perspective, that's funded by the partners involved or through uh, mechanisms such as research funding pots Mm -hmm. or um, European Union funding, Um, you know, through Interreg or ESIF, a European Structural Investment Fund. Well, that took like every moment of my mind for that one to come up. But um, as 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 a not for profit, um, our operational budget is key, and every pound spent has a purpose. It's accounted for, and it isn't wasted. So the donations will directly contribute to the continuation of our business model to ensure that we do remain independent and that we're not overly reliant on any one sector. Yeah, for that operational budget um as i said we're so fortunate that, that our technical budget is 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 um quite secure yeah. and which is great because you don't want to get halfway through a project and then realize mm. uh, you've run out of money or like the not. funding's not going to continue until the end um but we're grateful for any funding um that we get for you this and this membership agreement we have with indigo yeah. swan is a great addition and we think it's going to be really beneficial for, for mm-hmm. everyone Absolutely. Yeah. Please, happy to help. And uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing uh, how the relationship goes and, and grows. Um, so on your website, it says on the part of your strategy, contributing to low carbon, net zero, it's everywhere at the moment, yeah. and, and as it should be, yeah. you know, on the journey to 2050. How important is that to you guys? And, and, and does that play any part in your strategy and what you guys are doing at the moment? Um, it would be it would be silly of me to say that it's not important at all. Like it's important to everyone, as you as you mentioned. Um, everyone's talking about it now, uh, which is great. And we can kind of look at this from like two levels. So from a team perspective, so there's you know um, six, seven, eight of us in this team, um, um, and the, the new world that COVID has created has had a large role to play in this. So as a team and our day to day kind of operations and stuff, we're no longer traveling every day, whether that be by train or by car. um, And we're all working remotely exhibit a hello um and we'll continue to do that there's no need for us to be going to and from an office every day um we're only going to have meetings when we absolutely have to because some conversations you do get a richer experience if you are just having that face-to-face conversation um but otherwise for example so during the planning process we have a lot of the face-to-face conferences and going around the the region but we always look to work with venues who are driven by these sustainability credentials which is great um and that's something we we kind of embed into our day-to-day practice to the point where we don't even think about it anymore really um but looking regionally our headline here is that um looking at water supply uh, increasing population, climate change, mitigation, etc. You are, we are going to need some more supply side options for that, whether it's new transfer pipelines or new infrastructure such as reservoirs, for example. Um, they must remain carbon neutral to match the public water supply company's net zero by 2030 ambitions. Yep. Um, around 85% of water use in eastern England is for public water supply use. So that counts for a lot. Um, And it's great that they've come out with these ambitions. Um, But to get there, we're also involved in various research projects as well, Um, looking and working with the energy company members who have already set the groundwork for this kind of renewable energy uh, use Um, and thinking how we can connect the two worlds. Yeah. Um, And this is something that has to happen now. Luckily, we're in a, a place where we can do that. Um, the other challenge I was thinking of today is, is working with agriculture and bringing that sector more into this landscape um, yeah. and working as an organisation to help 
you know, progress pilot projects and, and research because the potential in this sector in particular is huge. So watch this space. There's a lot going on right, so about zero ambitions. Well, last little question for me before we come on to the objects I've asked you to bring with you today. Um, do we have a water problem? Would you define? Define, define a water problem. Define. Do we a, define. Well, problem, I suppose, as far as do we have a shortage? Right. Um, are we okay. likely to face trouble over the next 10 years as far as access to it? That time. If, if we continue thinking um, as innovatively as we are now, no. We don't have a, a water shortage problem per se. The problem is when we do have enough water, for example, in the in the rainy season, you know, in the winter, that a lot of that water gets lost because you want to stop flooding. So you, pu you pump it out to sea because you, yeah. yeah, water is great, but we don't need it now. Please. <laughs> we, don't want yeah, that we need much. it later. We need it come back later. And then obviously it comes in the summer and it doesn't come back because it forgets the memo or whatever. <laughs> so, so we're working on how can we store that water in the, in the environment and stop it from getting lost. Um, in the year, for example, in wetland systems or in these these reservoir systems, um, so that we can use it in the summer when when we're short. Um, yes, the east of England does suffer from a lower than average rainfall. God, does it? Uh, I don't know. I haven't looked. Um, I mean, people are not really sure. Um, compared to the rest of the of the UK or even just the rest of England, yeah. but we. If we if we continue to think innovatively outside the box and continue on the path that we are now, pushing boundaries, thinking the art of the possible, it it won't become a hindrance. It won't become a problem. But we need this is why we all need to work together, our members included, to push those boundaries and and see what we can do together. Amazing, Nancy. Thank you. So no, in a word, no, we don't. Hey, don't there you go, people. people. Don't worry. Sleep easy. We're okay. <laughs> Just become a member of WA. <laughs> Get your pound in. Um, so I asked you to bring something along today that has been mm -hmm. important to you since, unfortunately, the, the, the global pandemic we've had since 2020 into, into 2021. What is that object and what is the significance to you? So I thought a lot about this and I thought at the end of the day, I couldn't just say like a bottle of wine of, <laughs> of any brand. Um, yeah. It doesn't really <laughs> yeah, cut the biscuit whatever. on this question. Um, but I really got into cooking. Um, yeah, so this is one of, one of many books I've got my my poor mother when I was in lockdown with my mum in the UK I think my book collection expanded to about 30 to 50 yeah. cooking books she's like well, where are these all going to go um I worked a lot on like honing skills in particular things so I believe I now make the best guacamole that you can buy outside of Mexico um <laughs> <laughs> and um, like making my own pasta, really getting into that. You know, it was stressful for everyone. And I find cooking really therapeutic. Just the art of like cutting an onion in silence for like 30 seconds just like really calms me down. So that's what got me through lockdown. And were you doing much cooking before or is this? Yeah, loads. Yeah, yeah, but it, was, yeah. it was more it was more like for convenience. You know, I, you, I knew how to make kind of like five dishes quite well. So they were just on like a rolling rotation. But lockdown allowed me to like think, how do you how do you actually cook a good piece of fish and like really get into the technique of it? Because I, I you know wasn't at the pub with my mates every Friday night. You know. I love it. I love it. Do <laughs> you hope you don't mind me asking? But what 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 you can obviously work remotely, which is wonderful. Hence, you can work out of Spain, which is sensational. What 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 took you to Spain? What do you enjoy about Spain? Um. You know, I lockdown and COVID and everything, I think, really put a lot of things into perspective for many people. Yeah. I had to really kind of think what I wanted for the next kind of five years of my life. I was turning 30. Um, Brexit was looming on the horizon. Um, yeah. I've always had a certain love for Spain. Me and my family always used to come here for holidays, most summers. Um, and I kind of just thought, why not? Let's just do it and give it a go and see what happens. And even if it doesn't work out, the worst thing is I just come home, you know, yeah. and move back in with my lovely mother. She would hate that, but you know, it's like <laughs> just while I well, just while I found a flat or whatever. Yeah. Um, and being able to work for water resources has been amazing. It's it's um, it's really 
kind of shown day to day how we do push the art of the possible you want to move in spain no problem let's let's do it and see what happens Amazing. um we continue we can continue to be we're an international organization as far as yeah. i'm concerned in the in our reach our research our partners um so it kind of reflects our wider kind of mentality and ways of working perfect yeah. nancy perfect well before i let you go just one last thing is that where can people go where's the best place for people to go to find out more about wre <laughs> So for our kind of like headline stuff, like our bulky documents and our, our core um, vision and mission, go to our website, wre.org.uk. For day-to-day, uh, -day, catching up on what's going on in general, you can follow us on LinkedIn, just Water Resources East, or on Twitter at Water R East. Amazing. Amazing. Well, Nancy, it's been lovely to speak to you. Uh, thank thanks, you for coming James. along and chatting to me. It's been great. Uh, thanks for coming along and having a listen, guys. And I look forward to seeing you on the next Swan TV. Thank you very much. Bye.